You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Okay. Have you ever heard of that? Is that um, study of how we acquire knowledge? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's kind of a philosophical thing. It's a weird hobby I have. I come out here and interview people about some belief claim they have. Okay. And for different people, it's different things. Okay. For some people, it's aliens. For some people, it's uh, God or a religious claim. Sure. For some people, it's politics. Yeah. Or just some deeply held belief that you you feel certain about. Something that okay. you are you are really convinced of and that is kind of foundational to you. And I'm going to put my back to the wind just for the microphone's sake. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just going to shift a little sure. bit. This is good right here. Um, by the way, my name is Raul. What's your Raul? Jake. Nice to meet you. Jake. Man. Nice to meet you, dude. By the way, what are you studying here? Just English. English? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Why English? Uh, well, I did politics for a little while, um, but I didn't really like it because I didn't feel like people could be objective about it as much. Um, so I think it's easier to talk about a novel where you have the text right in front of you and you can interpret a story rather than talking about something that everyone has inherent bias. Interesting. Yeah. I could totally see how you would encounter all types of bias with something like right, politics. Right. So it's frustrating because you, you want to, you want to get an education here that's going to last more than four years. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's bashing Trump, and it's like, well, even if you're right, it's like God. He's only got maybe four years. Yeah. You know? Interesting. What were you going to do with a uh, a degree in what was it? Just politics, political science? Yeah. Or? It was well here. It's what, government and politics. But yeah, I was at, at Towson. It's called um, political science. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe law school. I hmm. don't know. I chose it based on like it seemed interesting. People like okay. you know, it's discuss it's a lot of discussion based, it's a lot of talking. Yeah. I was like, all right, I could get behind that, but a lot of people just talk to hear themselves talk. Mm. So you gotta listen interesting. to it, you know. Very yeah. yeah. So English now. Yeah. Right. Going go so far so good? Yeah, I'm almost done. Two more, two more classes after this semester. Dang. Oh, congrats! Yeah, thank That's you, really man. cool. Appreciate it. Plans going forward? You gonna get a try to get a job? With oh yeah, a job. But uh, what kind of job? I don't know. What? What did you study? I'm a, I'm a nurse. Yeah, oh, I got really? a bachelor's in nursing. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, true. So that's it's it's kind of a vocational sort of training. Yeah, sort it of, is. You know, but it is a bachelor's. Oh, and it's intense from right here. Yeah. Those programs yeah. are. Yeah. It is clinicals. Yeah. I, I like that it's not a bunch of just. Um, uh, reading books oh, yeah. uh, is very yeah, practical sure. that sure. you know we have the clinicals we're going to the hospitals and school as yeah. students that i actually wish there was more of that okay. i would have benefited more from my education as a nurse if i spent more time in the hospital and less time in the classroom really yeah okay yeah <laughs> it is interesting though that you that you all your class goes off campus i'd say like yeah it does through the school right i mean yeah yeah, yeah. the school um Put you, put you in the clinic, the hospital. Yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, so um, you picked the topic here. Okay. Just some belief claim you have, some knowledge claim that is kind of foundational to you that you're fairly certain of. Again, it could be that's, any number of things. But That's a hard one. Uh, I think it's easier to talk than it is to listen. Okay. That's I don't, I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for, but it's easier to talk than it is to than listen. It is to listen. Yeah. Okay. Um, because listening doesn't only require silence, but like your attention. Hmm. And especially in like today's world, like of the 30 second sound bite, for you to stand here like what you're you've been doing. I've seen mm -hmm. you out here before. It's like, okay. And you're like yeah. you stand here and listen to these people you don't know, and <laughs> yeah. put your like focused attention on it. It's like it's one thing to hear, but mm. like you're listening, you're taking in the words. I think that's way harder than just being like, oh, here's what I have to say. I'm yeah. Just throwing it out there. Right. Yeah, I agree. Listening is important. Yeah. So. Anything of a more, uh, I don't know, like, um, I try to I try to talk about beliefs that have some, um, something that can be like proven or disproven, some, some fact claim about the nature of reality, which well, that would be, but. That I'm, would be. I, I guess, I guess you're, like, I believe in karma. I think like great like what you do when no one's watching, um, you it either helps you or you have to pay for it. Later. Okay, so describe it for me again. You said what you do when nobody's watching, right. it either is going to benefit you down the line right. or, or you, you have you to, pay, have for to it. pay for it. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, of course, that's true if people are watching too. But like, people will say, "Oh, others might punish you." Then but it's like I think it's true regardless of who's around. Can I get a sense of how confident you are in this belief? Is it, are you 100% certain? 100%, yeah. Okay. 100%. So you're really high, high up there in your level of certainty. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, and mostly because in my life I feel like I've paid for the times where I've gone against my own conscience. Hmm. You know, there's like a okay. voice in your head that'll tell you immediately whether you should or shouldn't do something. And then after that, people tend to start to think, you know. I think it's before thinking where you're like, don't do that. Huh. Or like, go help that person. Okay. You know, things like that. Yeah. So my next question was actually going to be, I think you just answered it, was like, why, what brings you to 100%? Why do you hold this belief? And you mentioned there have been times when uh, you've gone against your conscience and you, right. you paid for it. So experience. Right. Right, experience, yeah. Is that kind of like the main thing? Would there be any other thing you would provide as, this is why I hold this belief, this is why I think it's true? I can't say, I can't say, okay. other than just, yeah. That's, so that's a big part of it then, yeah. experience. Right. Is it possible for this belief to be disproven, hypothetically? Hmm. Probably not, probably not. I mean, yeah, it would take a very like skilled tactician to figure out like how could you prove something like that? I don't know. I mean, maybe like a um, like a, a a study on someone's life. Hmm. So like following the decisions they make and the results of those decisions. I know there was one. There's some big study by Harvard that's been going on for like a hundred years or something. They followed the spans of people's life. And um, researchers have like carried on this experiment where they've followed people's lives and their outcomes. But I don't think they've done it as far as um, like karma goes, like in terms of hmm. like good decisions. But yeah, that, I'm not sure how you would do that. So I notice um, that you would require in order to, for this to be disproven, your standard would be a, a, a comprehensive study of some kind. Right. 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 On the flip side, to be proven, for this belief to be proven, I notice that you don't cite that as the standard. You right. cite ex personal experience. Right. Do you think that we should hold proving this belief to the same standard as disproving it? If you require, mm -hmm. on the one hand, a study to disprove it, should should we require a study to prove it? Absolutely, yeah. If, if, if um, yeah, for sure. But, uh, it won't change the fact that like I inherently believe it and I'm mm -hmm. willing like I'd be willing if like there's a study disproving it I would consider it if if there were like again I wasn't sure how to prove it I'm not sure how to disprove it either but if the study re came to a reasonable conclusion that it didn't matter I would mm -hmm. I would have to consider it mm -hmm. I think that's part of like listening like I said okay. like you have to be willing to take in uh, people's like experiences, of course, yeah. but like in my personal experience, it's been true. And so I'm, I'm going to go off that until proven otherwise, you know? Okay. Yeah. I wonder how you would interpret the opposite experience. Let's say, so you mentioned how you, there were times where you went against your conscience and you paid for it. What if you had an uh, a, a opposite experience where you went against your conscience and you didn't pay for it? Right. Um, Let's say you even got to the end of your life and you still hadn't paid for it. Right. In fact, you did, you did quite well. Yeah. How, how would that factor, would, would experience be sufficient to tip the scale of your certainty? If it brings you to 100%, if you had the opposite experience, what would that do for you? Mm. So you're saying at the end of my life, if, I, if I'm reflecting and thinking, you know what, I never paid for some misdeeds. Mm -hmm. I guess I would be, uh, I would want to know how I knew that I didn't pay for them. Hmm. Like how, how do I know that I didn't pay for them? Um, especially because like for me to think at the end of my life I was successful, it wouldn't involve a whole lot of material things. So like for me to consider myself successful, it would have had to been that I stayed loyal to the things I value, which are human relationships and treating others with respect. I think that supersedes any um, material gains I could have at the end of my life. It's mm -hmm. like, now I'm a student, I don't have a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I think if I, if I were to die right now, I would hope that people would say things on my eulogy that didn't involve money. Mm. What method did you use to determine that those times when you went against your conscience to determine that you did pay for it? Mm. 
because it, so it sounds like you would have, when the scenario I just posed to you, you're, you're on your deathbed, you're reflecting back, you expressed a sort of agnosticism towards, well, how do I know yeah. that I did? So, but you, it sounds like you do know that there were instances at this point where you would say, I paid for it. Yeah. So I wonder, uh, how come you don't express the same agnosticism currently when it comes to reflecting back on real experiences where you feel like you paid for it? So, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay, sure. So, uh, you, you said something that was interesting uh, when I posed to you um, the scenario where you're on your deathbed, you're reflecting back to instances where hey, I didn't pay for this thing. Yeah. You said, hmm, how would I know I didn't pay for it? Right. Which is a good question. Yeah. But I'm wondering why you don't ask yourself the same question currently when you reflect back on your real life and say, well, how do I know I didn't pay for that? Yeah. So you're saying, for the rever how do I know I paid for it then? Yeah, exactly. That's right. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. How do yeah. Right. That definitely takes a leap of faith. Um, yeah, it takes a leap of faith. Like when I'm, it, it it requires while I'm looking over my memories, thinking, this happened, this happened, and it doesn't sound good to me now. And it doesn't sound good to me now, and I can reflect on how I got to a point now where I'm dissatisfied with it. And I think be, learning how I became dissatisfied with it and how I changed it over time is paying, because like that's growth, like. I think growth requires paying some certain price, some certain amount of suffering. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look back on something and think, man, that was suffering. Like for me, that was suffering and now I'm different for it. I think that you paid a price or acknowledging that you paid a price mm -hmm. and that that suffering is the price. Hmm. And so I guess it, it definitely, but like I said, it does take a leap of faith and there's no def, definitely not objective truth in that. Yeah, there's no objective truth in that. And it could be based, based on any certain doctrine or inherent beliefs you have, which I'm sure can change. So given that, do you think you're justified at 100%? No. Okay, so it doesn't have to be right. No. Okay. Cool, Jake. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Sure. I wish you well, man. I know you're yeah, getting ready to finish Raul. up your studies, yeah, man. I, yeah. I wish you well going yeah. forward. I hope you're able to find a job and, sure. and put this to use. Yeah, I mean, uh, so like, what do you, is there like a goal from this? Like an the, ultimate goal? The goal? Yeah. The goal is very simple, is to get, get us to think about, deeply about how we arrived at our most deeply held beliefs. Mm. That's what I like talking to people yeah. about. No, it is interesting. Is our deep, you know, and it's interesting because you talked about in pol when you were pursuing a degree in politics, you ran into this all the time where people had these beliefs that it seemed like they were unable to question and they were so tied to them, that strong bias, you know? Right. And that's, yeah. that's what I want to bring to the, to the light. Yeah, you know, let's, let's shine did. a light on that. Definitely did, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Wow.